Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. For years, we've wanted to build a Windsor chair, and we're finally getting around to it. This is going to be a special two-part program, and this is the chair that we want to replicate. It's a Lancaster County fan bag. Look, 200 years old, but it's actually brand new. This was built by Pennsylvania chair maker Bill Wallach, and it was finished by his wife. Now, we're going to go to his shop so we can learn some of their secrets. We'll do that next. Then we'll come back here, and I'll show you the Windsor that I built, and then we'll build another one. So fasten your tool aprons and get ready to build a Windsor chair. That's next, right here in the New Yankee Workshop. Funding is provided by... One of the best kept secrets in Wrightsville, Pennsylvania, is Bill and Sally Wallach's chair shop. Now, if you can find North 7th Street and walk around a bit, you might stumble upon their showroom, which is filled with their wonderful work. I mean, look at these chairs, some bar stools. And this one, this white painted chair, looks like it's 250 years old. It's only 90 days old. And this is a one of a kind, a double arm Connecticut writing arm settee. And you could build a whole restaurant decor around this piece. And here's one of my favorites, a Lancaster County fan back. We saw one of these in an antique shop in Nantucket a couple years ago, and we fell in love with it. Let's see if I can find Bill. Hey, Bill, you got a minute? Now, Bill started as a truck driver, then he became a cabinet maker, and now he and his wife, Sally, make all these wonderful Windsor chairs. Hello, Norm. How you doing? Great. You have any trouble finding us? No problem at all. Good. Now, why don't you give us a lesson on these Windsor chairs? Okay. This is one of my favorites. Okay, this is a fan back Lancaster County armchair. And you've got four legs, three stretchers, two sides, and one medial stretcher, which is usually a Queen Anne. Mm -hmm. When you go to the seat, and you have a very nice shaped, kidney shaped seat. And it's got a tail in the back that's mortised in mm -hmm. with two long spindles going up to the crest. And you've got your arm post, uh, two short spindles under each arm. The arm coming out, and it's uh, attached to the square part mm -hmm. of the back post with very nice carved knuckles. Beautiful. And you've got five long spindles that go from the seat up to the crest. And the crest has uh, what you call a high relief um, carved ear. Well, it is a beautiful piece. How do you get started on this? We start with a seat. Let's go. Okay. Norm, what you're looking at are three Pennsylvania original chairs, mm -hmm. and they all basically have one thing in common. They have a one-piece tulip poplar seat. Wow, cut out of a chunk of wood like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose if you were to buy a factory-made chair today, it might be a glue-up. Any problem with that? Uh, the problem I see is uh, when, it's, when the seat starts to move, uh, the, the seat can come apart, mm -hmm. uh, you'll see the glue joints, and you never get that in a one piece. So you'd rather build it in a more traditional way. Right. Now the seat to me is one of the most complicated parts. There's a lot going on with it, so I really want to pay attention. So I see here you've roughed out the shape for another seat, and what are these layout lines for? Okay, I placed these lines on here so I could uh, drill the, the leg holes in the seat. Okay, so this is the underside, and that can be tricky. I mean, they have to be at a very specific angle. I find that part difficult. Well, that's why I made up this jig ah, to fit on my drill press. Jigs. All right, so it's an incline, mm -hmm. and what's this stick for? That is a center line to match up with these lines All right, on so the back of the seat. Show me how you position it. Okay, place your mark under the the drill. Right. And you line up that, that line with the center line on the, ah, on the jig. I see. And then you just drill it. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do it. Okay. So a little glue on that mortise and tenon joint. I just drive it with a hammer. Well, look at this. While we were down in Pennsylvania, a summer shower is passing through, but it's nice and dry in here. And here it is, my first Windsor chair. And I'm pretty happy with the results. One thing that I've learned while making it is that every piece is slightly different, and that's what gives it a lot of character.
Now, if you'd like to build your own Windsor chair, a measured drawing will be available with a materials list, and you'll hear more about that before the program ends. It'll also include a source for a piece of steam bent wood to build this crest rail. Now, before we do any woodworking, let's talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Here's the blank for our seat. It's a piece of poplar. The growth rings face up. And I laid out both the top and the bottom using this half template, which will be included in the drawing. It'll locate the holes for the legs, the arm post, the back post, and the spindles. And it'll give me guidelines by which I can drill the holes at the correct angle. Now, you'll note that there's a tail on this chair that fits into a mortise. Here's the blank for that tail all laid out. I'll make the shoulder cuts for the tenon first. And those are the cheek cuts. All right, with a little fine tuning, there's our tail. All right, there's the blank for our seat cut to a kidney shape. Now we can drill some holes. The jig that you just saw Bill use is one of the secrets to making this chair, or for that matter, any chair. For the leg holes, it's a fairly steep incline with the center marker. We'll give you a plan for this in our drawings. All I have to do is line up each leg hole and drill them. Now for the arm post, which come off at a slightly different angle, as well as the back post. So I have another jig, which is a shallower pitch. The methods are the same. Now for that back post, I need a slightly steeper slope. So I'm going to put this shim in here, tilt the jig up and drill those. The tail's next and I'll pin it with a couple dowels. The next thing I want to do is undercut the seat on the bandsaw. I'm going to go all the way around at about 22 degrees, three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. And then from post to post, I'm going to angle it to 45 degrees to make it a little steeper. The next part of this project is probably the most challenging and certainly the most physical, and that's to scoop out the seat. I use some pretty primitive tools. The idea is to leave this point, the pommel, alone. That's the high point at the front edge. Then it scoops down and comes back up to the rain gutter at the back. It also goes from rain gutter to rain gutter in this direction. And these edges have to be rolled. I found that when I built the prototype, it wasn't quite aggressive enough. I have to get this middle down about an inch. Now, while I get started, why don't you watch how a master chair maker gets it done? Where do you begin on this, Bill? Okay, I'll start here by... Leaving, I want to leave this palmel. It's called the palmel of the seat. So that's this part right here. So you're not taking part. anything away right there. No. And I'll work a channel back through to the rain gutter, and that channel will establish my depth mm -hmm. in my saddle. And then I'll work it both sides to the rain gutter. So you're working it right up to this little groove, which you call the rain gutter. Yes. All right. Well, let's see how you do that. It looks like a lot of work. Well, it'll make you sweat. <laughs> Okay, I go this this way toward the back of the seat to keep from chipping out the front. Here, Norm, you try. Okay. Okay, you want to kind of swing it like you're swinging a baseball bat. Follow through. You're doing a great job. I want to go a little bit deeper. Let's change direction here a little bit now. Okay, we'll tr come in like this to change the channel. Or to finish the channel off, 
So maybe we can go a little bit deeper. Okay, to measure the depth of the seat, we'll just lay a straight edge from the, across the palm L to the tail. And hold the rule up. We've got about an inch and a sixteen. Come down on our working piece. And we've got uh, a little over five eighths. So we got to go down uh, another three sixteenths. We can achieve that by using a two-hand inch shave. And with this tool, you cut across the grain always. So it doesn't catch on the fiber. Mm -hmm. Or the grain, you know. And Otherwise, it'll pull it, it. It's sharp enough that it will try to find its own way. Ooh. So you don't want to dig it in too sharp, it seems to me. No, it's, that's what I was telling you about the angle. This. Well, we're lucky here we have an actual chair as a model to go by, but what if we were going about this blind? Well, actually, a blind man could do this. Uh, you just use your hands. So you feel it? Yeah. You feel it like a, an auto body man would rub his hand over a fender, trying to find a high and low spot in the bumps. And then just go back to it. Mm -hmm. Good tip. So now you're dealing with that little rain gutter detail, and you're just using a small gouge, and you're not going too deep. Any historical significance to this detail? I think it's mainly for design. I just did it mainly for design to encompass the spindles. All right, so I've got a couple legs in the finished seat belt, and now the challenge is, is to lay out and drill the correct angled hole for that stretcher. Okay, well, there's a couple of tricks involved. Um, to start with, the slice in the tendon has to be turned so it runs perpendicular with the green okay. in the seat. And that's important. That's very important okay. because if you put the wedge in with the grain running in the same direction the grain of the seat is, we'll split the seat. All right, good tip. Okay, so now we'll pick the pick the um, chair up like this a little bit, and you want to measure for your stretcher. So you're measuring between those little between lines the, that the have two been scribes and, yeah. between the two scribes you put on the legs. Yeah, and we have 12 inches. So we want to come in there um, about an inch on each leg. So that'll be the length of the tenon, right? That would be the length of the tenon on each end. So you'd have a side stretcher. It would be about 14 inches. Okay. Okay. Now we want to, you ask about the angle. Take a straight edge between the two legs. Put it on the inside of the mark of, that of the leg. Yeah. And draw, take a pencil and draw a line, straight line to the center across your straight edge. This will give you your angle, your drill angle. Now, Norm, over here in this drill press, drill press, I have this uh, wedge. And what we want to do here is line up with a straight edge. All right, so if I go right in the center of the bit and slide it down, I can see that the layout line is parallel. So if you bring it to the center of the bit and drill mm -hmm. the hole, it should be perfect. That's right. Great. Now those fit pretty well. Now how about the holes and the side stretches? Okay, you take a straight edge again, okay. as we did with the uh, with the legs, and you line it up with the inside of the mark on the side stretcher, mm -hmm. and then you draw a line, just like we did on the legs. So it's the same technique, but it looks like we'll have to use a slightly shallower wedge. It's a lot less angle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Norm, we have. Uh, a wedge here with a little bit lesser angle okay, for the side stretcher hole. Check it with the straight edge. Here's your pencil line. Lines up pretty well. Looks perfect. Okay, let's draw it. Okay. How'd we do, Bill? I think we did great, Norm. Well, I'd say we're well on our way to making a Windsor chair. While Bill showed you how to scoop out one of these, I did mine. And I must say, the second time around, it goes a little bit faster and it's a little bit easier. Now I'm using this gouge to carve out that gutter detail that I laid out earlier. Okay. Well, now we're ready to start doing some turning. We need several pieces. Four legs, three stretchers, two arm posts, and two back posts. 
I like to use my stand here to hold a sample. Here's the front leg, and I can use that as reference to check diameters and see exactly what the end result has to be. For blanks, I'm using maple. I cut pieces that were square, and then I knocked off the corners to save some time while I do the turning. The first thing to do is to make this round, and for that, I'm going to use a gouge. Okay, now that's round, so I can start to put some marks at different events in the piece. For instance, here where the tenon starts, this transition. Now I'll take the calipers and set them to this diameter right here. And using this and my parting tool, I'll make a cut right at that transition. Now I want to size this tenon. It's a three-quarter inch tenon. But I'm not going to use the calipers. I got a really neat trick from Bill Wallach. He just uses an open-end wrench, a three-quarter inch wrench for the three-quarter inch tenon. It's a real easy way to get accurate measurements. Now with a small gouge, I can make this cove cut and round over this bead. Okay, we're gaining on it now. This leg is all turned and sanded smooth. The last thing I want to do is put this score line in the leg with my skew chisel, and that's going to help me locate the hole for the stretcher later. Now, before I leave tonight, I'm going to turn these stretchers using similar techniques, and tomorrow morning we'll be able to put the base of this chair together. Well, good morning. Last night I stayed long enough to finish turning all the legs and the stretchers. And now I'm finalizing the seat. I'm smoothing up all the edges, rounding over any sharp edges with a variety of sanders, because this is the time to do it. Once I start assembling it with legs, it's going to be very difficult. So a few minutes more on this, and we'll be ready to move on to the legs. I've just cut a curve in the tenon of the top of the leg, and it has to be perpendicular to the grain, and that will receive some wedges later to help squeeze the leg in that hole nice and tight. All right, with the legs dry fit in the seat, the first step is to make sure that these kerf cuts are perpendicular to the grain of the seat. If I were to install it parallel to the grain, when I put the wedge in, there's a chance I could split the seat along the grain. So this is an important step. The next thing to do is to lay out for the stretchers. You need to drill holes for these stretches between the front and back leg. So what Bill showed me was to take a steel roll and put it across the legs, lining up these inside score marks. And once those are lined up, just draw a pencil line, and that's going to be a guide. Here's the setup for drilling those holes. I've got a wedge, a 5 8 inch bit, and I set the leg on the wedge, take a straight edge, align it with the center of the bit, and see if it aligns with the layout mark. In this case, it does. If it didn't, I'd have to shim it one way or the other until it aligns. Then I drill a hole. Now one suggestion that Bill had is just let the tip of the drill break through the other side. That way when I glue it up, there's a place for the glue to release. All right, now these are the front legs. Slightly steeper wedge setup. Now I have to lay out for this medial stretcher that connects the two side stretchers. And because the chair tapers towards the back, these holes have to be at an angle. So once again, I'll use a straight edge. 
line it up with the inside edge of these score lines on the stretchers and put a guideline. Okay, slightly different angle, same procedure. Now for the glue up. Just as my plumbing friend Richard Trithui might do before he glues up PVC pipe, I'm going to put alignment marks at each intersection. That way I know it'll go back together the same way. Now it's time to cut some hardwood wedges to go in those curves. This is a scrap piece of beech. I've laid out the wedges. I'll cut them on the bandsaw and then trim them as a group. Well, now I'm ready for some assembly, and I'm going to start with a pair of legs on one side of the chair. I'm putting glue on the tenon and trying to work some down in that kerf that I made. I've also applied glue to the inside of the hole. Now I can slip it in, turn it over. And I want to make sure that that kerf is lined up with the marks that I just made. That's good. Now for the wedge, a little more glue. It lined up on the edges. Tap it home. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Okay, with some glue in the holes that I drilled and on the ends of the stretchers, I can spread it out enough to squeeze them together. And then Align that witness mark. That's good. And you'll note that the glue has squeezed out through that little pinhole. So we know we got plenty in there. And finally, the medial stretcher. I didn't need any witness marks for this. You can only go in one place. All the angles are on the sides. Now it's time to trim off the top of the legs. I'm using a thin shim of wood so that the piece will be slightly above the seat. It'll also keep me from scratching the seat with the saw. And after it's cut, I'll just take a sander and round it over so it doesn't have any sharp edges. Three sixteenths. Okay, I want to make sure that the chair is going to be level across its width. So I've set it up here on the table saw, which is absolutely flat, placed the straight edge across the chair, and I'm measuring the distance. And it's the same on each side, so I'm okay in that direction. Now, I've lifted the front legs up on a piece of three-quarter inch plywood because I want the chair to pitch back a bit. And I had to put some shims under this leg because that appears to be the shortest one, and now it's not rocking. Now, if I take a pair of dividers, set it to the widest gap here, I don't want to trim any more than necessary, and scribe a line around the leg there. Now, with the same setting, I can go around this leg. All right, the dividers were at 5 eighths, so if I add 3 quarters, I want to be inch and 3 eighths. We'll lock them there. And now I'll scribe the back legs so that they'll be 3 quarters of an inch shorter. Well, we're just where we want it to be at the end of the first program, with a completed base. Next time, We'll show you how to carve the knuckles on these arms, as well as do this crest rail. We'll put the rest of the chair together, and then we'll go back to Pennsylvania and visit with Sally Wallach and have her show us the secrets of that great finish. So until next time, I'm Norm Abram from the New Yankee Workshop. Check this out. Funding is provided by 